Hey, what's up everybody? It's Travis from Simple C10. And on today's episode, we're gonna relocate the battery in Francis. So one of the main reasons I'm relocating the battery is because I'll eventually have GMSS inner fenders and that means I'm gonna have to relocate the battery to the back. If you're running factory inner fenders, just like how I cut these out, if you're running those types of fenders, you can leave the battery up front. But if you're running aftermarket inner fenders, usually those get in the way of the battery on the passenger side. So you gotta relocate that to the back. So this is the first time I've relocated one to the back. I've had a secondary battery in the back, but that's a whole different thing than relocating your main battery to the back. So in this episode, I'm gonna use the GMSS battery relocation bracket. It's really nice, I'll show you that in a second. We're gonna mount that to the frame on the very back of the truck, mount the battery there, and then we're gonna run our wiring for the air ride back there, and then run the power line up to a power bank in the front that the starter, the alternator, everything will tie into on the front of the truck. I'll also show you how to run your grounds up front. So this is a new experience for me. I think I have it mapped out in my head, but stay tuned, figure out how to put that battery in the back of your truck. I wanna start out with this GMSS battery relocation bracket. So Otis and his team out there made this battery bracket to fit the AGM Walmart battery that I use and that I love. I've talked a lot about that in my past videos, very similar to Optima Yellow Top. They also make these brackets for pretty much any other battery that you can think of. You just give them the dimensions. I believe they keep some in stock for Optima batteries as well. But this comes with all the grade eight hardware. You just line this up to your frame, you drill four holes, you bolt it in, put your battery in here. This thing comes off and it will slip on just like that and mount in there. Hold the battery really tightly. I love this design, it's great. I'm gonna bolt that onto the frame, go ahead and get the battery set in there. And then next what I'm gonna do is install these little battery brackets. And I love these things. I've used them on a couple different builds. What I love about these is this little clamp fixture right here. You can get this on your battery and then easily unclamp it and take everything off your battery at any time. So that's really handy. You can twist this to get it tighter. But what I love is these little connectors right here. You put your main battery line in here and clamp it down, but you can also use all four of these to mount different battery brackets. A connector that I love to use with this kind of bracket is one of these. So you slide your line in there and you clamp down on it with an Allen wrench. Then you can install this onto this bracket like that and have a couple different one of those for your air ride or any of the other things that you have. On the back of the truck, we'll have this mounted and it'll have the battery on it with these connectors. And then I'm gonna run the airlift three piece system to this bracket right here. And then this line will be plugged in here and we'll go all the way to the power bank in the front of the truck. And all the things on the front of the truck will run into this. That's what's gonna make this relocation simple is the air ride and everything will be close to this. I'll also run the fuel pump, the power line to this, and then have a relay running up to a keyed ignition. And it'll keep all the air ride and the fuel pump and all that stuff to the back of the truck and all the engine and other accessories on the power banks on the front of the truck. I also got some of this cord loom and I love the split sleeving loom. That way you can run all your lines and then slide that loom over the wires wherever you have. Um, whenever you get the solid loom, you've got to slide all the wires in and if you decide to change anything, you've got to cut it. They, these are really good, love this stuff. All these items are gonna be linked in the description. I'm also gonna make a specific breakdown on my website of battery relocation. So check that out, simpleC10.co. It's gonna be a tight fit in here, but this is the rear of the frame. And all we're gonna do is put this bracket on the side of the frame, mark our holes, and then we'll drill the holes and bolt the bracket up. Pretty easy.
So we've got the battery bracket mounted from GMSS Fab. Now it's time to put in our battery. So I love using these batteries. This is the Everstart Platinum. It's from Walmart. It's about $160. It's 710 cold cranking amps. And this thing compared to an Optima Yellow Top is very close for half the price. So this is what I run in my trucks. Otis made a specific battery bracket to fit this battery. And we're gonna go ahead and install it. This bracket slides onto the GMS bracket. It bolts in, holds it tightly. I'll show you that in just a second. But if you wanna save a few bucks, get this battery. I've used it on No Association, on a couple other trucks, on Blue, and this battery's great. Now that we have the battery bracket mounted to the back of the frame, what I'm gonna do is start to run the main two lines. So I'm gonna run that power line connected into there and run it all the way up to the front of the truck and then go ahead and hook up the ground and get that hooked to chassis back here. After I get those two things done, I'm going to go ahead and hook up the Airlift 3P system, the wiring for that, and then I have a fuel pump wiring kit that I'm gonna go ahead and wire up for the Boyd tank and wire that into the battery back here. So that actually saves me some time of running the wires all the way to the front. Then I'm gonna pull the fuel sending unit and then I'm gonna pull the fuel pump, both of those wires, and I'm gonna run them along the frame here and then go up into the frame where the air lines and everything run into the cab. And then once I have all the wires ran and everything where I want them to be, then I'm gonna wire loom everything and make it look really nice. Okay, I'm getting ready to install the wire to the battery all the way to the front of the truck and then on the ground here. And I'm gonna use this black power ground wire for the whole thing. I'll have this linked in the description as well. But I like to use black wire for everything. Um, that way you don't have a bright red wire running all the way down your frame. Everything else is black, so I just like to keep everything uniform and not anything to stick out. I'm gonna run this back here to this line. I'm not gonna plug it in yet because I don't want it to be hot as I'm running it through the frame, but just kind of get the length, get the length that I want, run it along the frame, and then I'm gonna start to use some of the rubber attachments, uh, the little clips like I used on the side of the frame to hold this wire and to hold some of the other wires and then organize everything once I have it ran. Okay, in the battery terminal kit, you're gonna get some of these little felt pads. That's gonna keep the brackets from hitting the battery, insulate it. And what I'm gonna do now is, on these brackets, you can see this back bracket goes up. So this is where you'll put your main wire and clamp this down on it. You can run your main wire on any of the connections. I like to run it here. That way I can use all four of these for other connections that I need to make back here. I'll need two for the air ride system, the Airlift 3P, one for each compressor. I'll need one for the fuel pump. And I'm sure I'll use the other one for something else that I'm not thinking of right now. But that's what I love about these connectors. And you can put more than one connector on here too. You could have a couple of different ring terminals connected to it. It's just a really simple way to hook your battery up and hook a lot of different things up to it and also still allows you to easily unclamp and pull this off. Um, I know the other thing I just remembered. The other thing that I'm going to run on here is I'm going to run to the back of the raised bed floor. When you pull down the tailgate, there's going to be a shutoff for the battery and also two battery posts. That way, when all this is located under the raised bed floor, I could either jump my truck off or jump somebody else's truck off or have those battery connections back there. All right, so I've got that loosened up. I'm gonna cut the wire and go ahead and plug it in. All right, 
that we've got that bolted in. Give it a good, <clears throat> good old pull test. <clears throat> make sure, I have to make sure there's no wires sticking around. Looks good. We're not gonna plug this back into the battery yet because that'll make it live, but I'm just gonna lay it back here and get it close to where it's gonna be. Let me update you on what I've done so far. As you can see here, I've got the battery mounted. I've got the battery brackets on there. So I'll explain this big black one right here that's going around. That is going all the way up to the front to the power bank. And that is where all of our electronics will hook into the starter, the alternator. It's really our main line running to the front. You can see two lines running out of here. Both of those go to a fuse that is going to the Airlift 3P system. And those also have two grounds that are connected together right there. This is the main chassis ground that I haven't hooked up yet. I'm going to get a connection and hook it into the side of the frame. All we have left now here is I'm going to run the gas, the fuel gauge here, the wires. I'm gonna run those around and run them all the way up to the cab. And I'll show you how I've organized these wires. I really like the way that it turned out to use these little rubber brackets and it holds the lines really tightly. And I love how both fuses ended up being right there so I can check those really easily. I love these battery terminals, they're so useful for hooking in little connections like this to be able to unclamp them. But I ran the line here and then I screwed in one of those into the side of the frame and then took that turn and then put two more, then put one here. And then I started running the line all the way up to under the hood. Usually what I do with these on the side of the frame the frame has a lot of just small holes, so I'll bolt those in with a lock washer and hardware. And then I went through and zip tied the wires together. I like to separate my air line from my electrical line. That way if you have an electrical issue, it's not melting your air lines. So I try to keep those separated. And anywhere that there's fuel, I try to keep the hots away from the fuel lines as much as I can. Whenever we get it over to Zach's, I've already got this fuel tank ready to go all the way up to the fuel filter regulator. All we'll have to do is hook in the AN fitting here and run that up to the fuel rail on the LS and then everything will be ready to go. So I've got a couple ideas for what I'm gonna do for fuel filling and to be able to get to the battery on the back when you put the tailgate down. The raised bed floor section, what I'm thinking about doing is getting one of those gas caps that you can put the gas nozzle and push it into the hole and fill it up. And then when you pull it out, it kind of closes on its own. If I could put one of those like right here and have it fill up the tank. And then also over here, I'm working to get a battery terminal insert 
that goes into that section that has the two terminals for your battery and then a battery turn off switch for that. So when you put the tailgate down, you'll have a place there to connect jumper cables or any kind of electrical thing or to turn your battery off or to hook up a battery charger and your fuel fill all on the back side, kind of that raised bed floor section. So no holes in the bed floor. I don't have to worry about it tilting anything. Just trying to come up with something different for that, but the back is getting really close to being done. All I gotta do is run those few more lines. I've got the Airlift 3P. A lot of people have been asking about that. I've got the Airlift 3P right there is where I'm gonna mount it. I've got the air lines and the electrical running through the cab. And I'm gonna hook those directly into there and mount that down to the floor and then the seat will cover all that up. For the exit line, I don't know if you can see, there's a line or there's a hole in the floor right there. I'm gonna run the exit line to a bulkhead fitting. So when you hit down, all the air will escape under the cab. So that's just not blowing air into the cab. But yeah, that should keep it out of the weather. I usually mount it back here in the bed somewhere, but with the saddle tank setup that I'm running here, I thought about all running it inside. That's about the best thing that I could come up with um, besides like mounting it under the raised bed floor. But I like to have everything where I could take the bed off of it and the bed isn't held down by electrical or anything like that. You can take it off without unbolting anything. The next step to relocating this battery is to take off this factory battery box and find a place to mount our power banks. And from those power banks, all the other things that are already up here are gonna plug into those. This line, as you see right here, this is coming from the battery on the back. We need to hook this into the positive power bank, and then all the things that were positive on the battery will then plug into the bank. Since I'm going aftermarket inner fenders on this truck, all this stuff is gonna have to come out anyway, and I'm just going to find a place to self-tap the power bank into the firewall right here and later on I might have to move it up or down I'm gonna leave some slack in the line right now it's all about just getting the truck where everything works um, and then whenever we get the inner fenders from GMSS whenever I get the LS in and all that I will come up with the permanent solution for the power banks and how the electrical up here is ran battery box out of there. Now I have the power banks. So all, all this stuff right here, these are the lights, the power that runs to the dash, the starter, and the alternator. They're all right here. So what we need to do is hook all this stuff up to the power bank and run that line that's running from the back of the truck into the power bank. And that's the same thing as having everything running to the battery. Um, right now, again, like I said before, I don't know exactly where those inner fenders are gonna mount in or anything. So I'm just gonna take these and I'm gonna self tap them into the firewall temporarily. And I'm just gonna run these wires and get them all connected in. Um, I'm not gonna cut anything to length or make it perfect right now until I get the LS in there because every wire is gonna be different on the LS, the inner fenders. I might need to run longer wires to hide everything. But right now, this is just to get the truck running and everything working to be able to get it over to Zach's to start the LS swap. Right now, all I see as far as a ground um, is this ground. So you'll have this ground that goes to the actual engine itself that's grounded. And then I'm gonna run a ground from the ground power bank to the actual frame. So that'll have two things grounded, two points of ground. And then what's good about doing it this way with these is 
I can add a lot of other ground. So if I get Dakota digital gauges, I can run the wires up to these um, and either plug them into one of the screws or one of the posts. Lots of different options that you have by running these posts from the back. Check this out. This is exactly all the factory connections that I pulled off the battery. And they all connect perfectly. The three that led to the lights in the dash slid right on there. The one to the starter, the one to the alternator. It all fits on there perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is take this little connector and I'm gonna connect it into the battery line that's running from the back. And I'm gonna connect it just like that right there. Then we'll put the cover on. And that's it for the positive. That's exactly how it's hooked up from the factory. Whenever we put the LS in here, we'll move these right here. I just have them self tapped in there and we'll move them somewhere that you can't see. And these look like they're gonna work out great. Right now, I don't know if you need a full ground one this big. I just got them cause they were a pair, but you might be okay with just a single or double post if you need the extra space. wrap we've got everything plugged into the power banks here and remember this is just temporary to get the truck to Zach's house and once I have those GMSS inner fenders then I'm going to move this to wherever it needs to go and you'll see a part of that too but if you're not running GMSS inner fenders or if you just have yours cut out like this this seems to work really nice right here everything is easy to get to on the back side of this is some relays mounted for the lighting and things like that. I left a little bit of slack in the power line. That way I'll have plenty of power line to run whenever I get the LS in there. It's coming along. I've got the truck aired up and it's ready to go to Zach's. Hey, I appreciate everybody watching. Remember the link is in the description, all the parts, the website, all the things are there. Follow me on Instagram at simple.c10 and post some questions, hit the like button, subscribe if you don't already subscribe. Appreciate it. Have a great week.